aligning with the trials of the anti Midas. Snap on the back, law, look up in the sky. Yeah. Shake falling out of the fringe. All hearts, though, we would have made cowardly kings. They will chop you down just to count your rings. Just to count your rings. Just to count your rings. And our... Start your season with recommended settings. If you wish to change roles or adjust options, Use the tiles on the right. Your season starts now. Start the regular season by selecting your season goal. Meeting your season goal gives high rewards, but does come with risk. Kick off your week by installing your game plan.
boys. Coming out of yesterday's practice, we all know it wasn't good enough. Today's practice has got to be great. Game day's coming fast. Let's go out here and let's be great, okay? Now let's go! Green 39! Green 39! Kick your season off by starting your first game. Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. it right side to Brim. Oh, he shifts past him. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Now gone. He's got the hook up here on the comebacker. Complete. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. And as a first-rounder, a lot of eyes on him, a lot of expectations. And he has to play well in his rookie year. Those days of coddling guys and bringing him along slowly, those days are long gone. When you're drafted in the first round, they expect you to play right away. And the community's eyes and fan base, they'll be on you the entire way. And you take a look at this draft class from a season ago, really it grades out as a pretty darn good class. So they have to give a lot of credit to the entire scouting organization. General manager, personnel department, college scouts, all came together. They evaluated it very well and got a nice payoff. Let's go. Goff wants to throw on third and one. He finds his man. It's Austin. 
And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. Well, we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. Give him seven on the play, and it's a second down. And a good sign for them right now to have their young quarterback looking confident on the opening drive. Now, we haven't met a young quarterback, a veteran quarterback. It doesn't matter. We haven't met a quarterback yet that doesn't tell us he's confident about his abilities, right? That's true. But when you're young, it's really important to get off to a good start because it does build up that confidence and allows him to play better as the game goes on. Especially crucial here on the road. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And how about this first drive? They're being aggressive, slinging it around. Really confident, too, because they're not trying to fool them with running plays throwing it, and they're being very successful right now. The first carry is a Los Angeles Ram for Todd Gurley. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. On second down, here's Goff. He has Britt over the middle. That catch good for five. It's third down. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Goff on third down. And he will find his man. It's Kenny Brent. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown Rams. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Back to the air. Goff on second down. Austin's got it left side. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps have a guy who can turn it loose. And, boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. Now it's gone off the bootleg. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Goff now to throw over the middle it's incomplete. He was looking to get it to Kenny Britt that time. And that'll make it third down. So here we go now. An extra defensive back in there on third and ten. Throwing on third. Golf. And the third down pass falls incomplete. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Second and 10, golf again. And the hit jarred it loose. 
It's incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Now gone. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. So a pause here for us as well. Time to pay some bills. We'll come back here right after this. A reminder coming up at this and every halftime this season, we'll be checking in with Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of our first half. LR, that's my man. That's your guy. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Back to throw, gone. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. I see an extra defensive back on the field. What a surprise here on third and one. Goff now looks to throw. It's complete to Brett. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. The one running back is Gurley. Here's Goff. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Now Goff on first down. He's got his man on the comebacker. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really... He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Eric Reed. And a big turnover there as his... take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. On second and ten, golf. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So a ways to go here on third and ten. On any pass that's in the middle of the field, anyone is going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. When I watched Jared Goff on tape at Cal, I saw a guy who wasn't just a dart thrower. You know, a lot of people said, ah, oh, he's perfect for the West Coast offense. I always said he could do a little bit more, and that was the reason why. He can push it downfield. He has a good, strong arm. He has Brent over the middle. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here we go now. Boom, landed. Boom, landed. Again, golf. He gets this one complete to Brent. That catch good for five. It's third down. Now third down, less than a yard. Here we go now. 
Goff wants to throw on third and one. He's going to find his man. That's Tavon Austin. Touchdown, L.A. Tavon Austin, 45 yards. The Rams offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern. Down the numbers. There he goes. Touchdown, L.A. Their big-bodied receiver with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Rams have taken the lead here in the fourth. So we just witnessed touchdown number one for the Rook, and certainly that's a football he's going to want for the trophy case. Yeah, this is one that you don't spike, right? This is one you don't throw to your teammate and let them celebrate. This one you keep for yourself. Take it over to the equipment. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, to see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last true. time. That's I true. mean, that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. Here we go now. Back to the air, Goff on second down. The intended receiver, Tavon Austin. And that takes us from second to third down. Third down here for the offense after the incomplete pass. Throwing on third, Goff. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. Los Angeles and they're coming off a three and out my friend then they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't come before time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving okay so how do you do that how do you shake things up now whistles come in we're going to get a timeout here by the offense it's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. So this offense really needs to make something happen here late in the fourth with the football. On first and ten, Goff. Looking left side, and it's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. On first down, it's gone. His throw incomplete. He was looking for Todd Gurley, and that'll bring up second down. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well, and he didn't get that done on that play. And he goes out of bounds inside the 10 at the 9. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot. that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. You have to have two inbounds in the NFL. The head coach relied on his eagle eye in the sky to make the right call and was told to challenge it. And it looks like it's paid off. And from a coach's standpoint, when you throw that flag, it's probably a pretty tense moment here it pays off. Yeah, you have that little bit of indecision. You throw it where you feel like you're right, and then you think, uh-oh, did I get it right? In this case, they can celebrate. Desperation time for go. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. the field. 
field. Here comes Los Angeles. They're down here in a one-score game, but the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not, because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences, and this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Just be glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute, and they're an extra point away from tying this game. And while it appears the heavy lifting was a cut. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out, except for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets double, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team. And that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. Well, it's been loud in here so far. Second and 10, golf again. And he comes back with one complete. And all the way down to the 24-yard line. A huge play there in overtime, 51 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. And it's knocked away and incomplete. I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell incomplete. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times. Tried to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. And now he's closing in on 450 yards passing. That's an incredible number. I mean, you're talking about the best defenders in the world that you're trying to throw the ball against. And, you... and he is in for the score! It's absolute stunned silence here as they win it on the road in overtime. As the fans exit back out through the turnstiles, not happy looks on their faces.